This video is part of the e-learning series Expansion of Mesenchymal Stem Cells in Stirred Single-Use Bioreactors, specifically cells derived from human adipose tissue and generally referred to as MSCs. In this section we focus on microcarrier-based cultivation in a stirred benchtop bioreactor, the Universal SU from Sartorius Stedham Biotech. The Universal SU is a gamma-sterilized rigid polycarbonate vessel with a working volume from 600 ml to 2 litres. It is equipped with two three-blade segment impellers and optical sensors for non-invasive pH and dissolved oxygen measurement. On the vessel's lid, there are various ports for media addition, harvesting, and sampling. There are also three ports for the insertion of conventional sensors. Aeration is possible by using the L-shaped sparga or overlay aeration. Both air inlets and outlets are equipped with sterile filters. With respect to temperature control, the vessel has a thermowell for the temperature sensor and either a heating blanket or a water-filled heating and cooling jacket. Not only do the microcarriers and the medium need to be prepared before a cultivation can be started, but also the universal SU. To ensure proper sensor function, it is recommended that bioreactor preparation is started the day before inoculation begins. Both the bioreactor preparation and the subsequent inoculation take place in a special laminar flow cabinet. The pre-sterilized vessel has three layers of packaging. The first layer is black and protects the vessel from dust and especially from light. This is required to avoid any photo bleaching of the optical sensor patches. The second and third layer are transparent and are the sterile part of the packaging. After removing the universal from the bag, all clamps are closed and the components are checked visually for damage or loose parts. Now a sterile funnel is inserted into a free sensor port and the bioreactor can be filled with the prepared microcarriers. After transfer of the microcarriers, the funnel is washed and the bioreactor is filled up with sterile cultivation medium to a working volume of 600 ml so that the lower impeller is completely covered. If you are interested in more detailed information about microcarrier preparation, we would refer you to video number 3. After closing the open port, the bioreactor is placed in the universal holder next to the control unit and connected to the device. The motor is started using the adapter. Tubes for aeration are connected to the gas inlet filters, that is, to overlay or to sparga as appropriate. The exhaust filter is equipped with a filter heater to prevent condensation. Finally, the temperature probe is inserted into the thermowell, which is filled with water or glycerol, and the heating jacket is installed. Agitation, temperature regulation and headspace aeration are then switched on and set to 91 RPM, 37 degrees Celsius and 0.2 VVM respectively, which in our case means 100 ml per minute. In order to allow proper wetting of the sensor patches, equilibration must be performed for at least 2 hours. However, 6 to 12 hours is recommended. When the temperature and process signals are stable, the sensors can be calibrated. The calibration differs from the conventional procedure as sensor patches are integrated into the sterile vessel. The sensor patches are calibrated by the manufacturer and calibration data are delivered with the bioreactor. First, the data from the labels are entered into the control unit. This is followed by recalibration in order to ensure that the values have been correctly measured. 
To calibrate the pH, a sample of the medium is taken with a sterile syringe through the sample port. The pH is measured with an offline pH meter. The value obtained is then entered into the control unit. For dissolved oxygen calibration, the value is set to 100% saturation as soon as the medium is completely saturated. The pH regulation can then be switched to a set point of 7.2. After conditioning the microcarrier medium suspension in the bioreactor and carrying out sensor recalibration, we are ready for the cell inoculation. As in the spinner flasks, cryopreserved cells from the vial-based working cell bank are used. Each vial provides enough inoculum for one bioreactor. The required number of vials is taken out of the nitrogen storage tank. and thawed in the water bath at 37 degrees for approximately 2 minutes. On the laminar flow bench, the cells are transferred to preheated medium. This dilutes the toxic anti-freezing cocktail which is contained in the freezing medium. The tubes are centrifuged for 5 minutes at 1000 G and the supernatant is removed. Resuspension in fresh culture medium then takes place. Cell density and viability are determined using the cell counting device NucleoCounter. Inoculation volume is also calculated. It is essential to have around 3 times 10 to the power of 3 cells per square centimetre of carrier surface and cell viability above 95% to achieve the cell growth target. The bioreactor is transferred under the laminar flow hood and filled with the cell culture broth, in other words, the inoculum. This is done with a sterile funnel which is inserted into a sensor port. The funnel is washed with 50 ml of medium before removing it and closing the inoculation port. Before linking the bioreactor with the control unit, several important additional devices need to be connected to the bioreactor. These are the medium bag with 2 litres cell culture medium, the waste bag, the harvest bag, and the external sampling device. The bioreactor is then placed in the universal holder next to the control unit and connected to it. To guarantee homogeneous cell distribution, the impeller is turned on for two minutes at the NS1U criterion. For our cultivations, we had previously determined 91 RPM to be the impeller speed required. Subsequently, the impeller is switched off for four hours to allow the cells to settle down and attach to the microcarriers. During this time, only the temperature is controlled at 37 degrees Celsius. After the cell attachment process has finished, continuous agitation at 91 RPM is performed. 
The medium volume must be increased to a final working volume of 2 litres. The clamp on the medium bag is opened and the medium is transferred to the bioreactor until the 2 litre point is reached. This is the maximum working volume of the Univessel SU. Next, agitation, temperature, pH and dissolved oxygen regulation and headspace aeration are all switched on. The cell expansion process is carried out at 37 degrees Celsius, pH 7.2, dissolved oxygen greater than or equal to 30% and headspace aeration of 0.2 VVM. It is recommended that offline samples for determination of cell density, concentration of glucose, lactate, glutamine and ammonia, as well as for DARPI staining, are taken daily. For sampling, an external sampling device is used. A 50ml syringe is filled with air and connected to the air filter of the sampling device. The clamp on the tube connected to the bioreactor is opened, the syringe is exhausted and the microcarrier cell suspension immediately drawn up until the sampling device is completely filled. To transfer the sample from the sampling device to a falcon tube, the second clamp is opened and the syringe exhausted again. When around 2 times 10 to the power of 4 cells per square centimetre has been reached, 50% of the culture medium has to be replaced to prevent nutrient limitation. This is usually between days 3 and 4. For the partial medium exchange, impeller as well as pH and dissolved oxygen regulation are turned off. Now we have to wait until all the microcarriers have settled at the bottom of the bioreactor. Using a peristaltic pump, 50% of the working volume is pumped into the waste bag. and replaced with the fresh culture medium contained in the medium bag. Afterwards, impeller, pH and dissolved oxygen regulation are switched on and the cell expansion is continued. With increasing cultivation time, microcarrier cell aggregates become larger and reach diameters of between 2 and 3 mm at the end of the cultivation, that is, on day 6. At this point, cell density is around 1 million cells per milliliter, while cell viability is around 98%. This is the point for cell harvest. The whole bioreactor content is now transferred to the harvest bag using a peristaltic pump. Regarding cell harvest, it is worth mentioning that degradation of used microcarriers has to be taken into account. If the microcarriers are degradable, for instance collagen carriers, they can be digested enzymatically. If the carriers are non-degradable, as is the case with polystyrene-based microcarriers, the cells have to be detached enzymatically from the carriers, for example using trypsine. Subsequently, the carriers need to be separated from the cells, which can be done with a sieve. To remove the enzymatic detergent, suspension is usually centrifuged and the cell pellet resuspended in fresh medium. Before the cells can be further processed, it is important to check their quality. For this step, we would refer you to video number 5. It is important to take the following into account when expanding HMDCs from adipose tissue in the Univessel SU so that maximum cell quantity with a desired cell quality can be achieved. Firstly, the optimum microcarrier medium combination. Secondly, the optimum microcarrier concentration. And finally, the optimum initial cell density. Furthermore, we recommend that the bioreactor is operated at the lower level on the just suspended impeller speed. This is referred to as the NS1U criterion and ensures tolerable shear stress for this application. Taking this parameter into account avoids the diffusion limitations which can result from large microcarry aggregate sizes and influence the harvesting point. How this criterion can be determined is described in video number 2. Click replay to watch this video again or follow the links to the other videos.